Hello there. So we're streaming live. So welcome to This is 65. Hello, everybody. My name is Erin Ackenheil, and I own Blackpoint Insurance. Blackpoint is an insurance agency that covers nationwide, helping people learn about the A, B, Cs, and Ds of Medicare. And we help agents and brokers to launch, grow, and retain their businesses. Through that process, we meet some amazing people along the way doing dynamic things, entrepreneurs, side hustlers, even celebrity chefs uh, that we can bring onto the show. And I'm so excited to introduce to you today, Joanne Weir. Uh, she's an award-winning chef and author, and she's a cooking instructor. She owns the popular Copita restaurant in Sausalito. We recently went there, wonderful restaurant, and hosts popular cooking shows like the Joanne Weir Cooking with Confidence, and she's an international celebrity chef. So just want to welcome her. I'm beyond excited to introduce Joanne Weir. Welcome, Joanne. Hi, how are you, Erin? I'm doing wonderful. I'm so appreciative that you came onto the show today. I know you've been uh, traveling. You've just recently been to New York, so you flew in just to do the show today. So thanks so much. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I know we've been talking about it for a while, so it's really fun to be here with you. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you realize we, we just, my team and I, we just had our holiday dinner, right? You know, we just wrapped up open enrollment for us over here, been super busy, and uh, we wanted to have a really special holiday dinner. And for the first time, I actually brought the team uh, to Copita in Sausalito, your restaurant. We had a wonderful time. Oh, that's so great. I know it's funny because Felix, our manager, told me that you were there and how much fun all of you had. And I'm so thrilled. I'm so glad you liked it. It is a really fun place. I mean, it's it's got a good energy, right? It really does. I, I got a great vibe. Like we were really comfortable and relaxed. Um, you know, it's funny because I was thinking Mexican restaurant, you know, it's going to be rounds of margaritas for everyone. And there certainly was some of those, but it was really upscale, fine dining, delicious, you know, um, a nice, I guess, a modern flair of Mexican food. So I was having my wine and just loving it. Um, delicious. Right. I know, you know, I think so many people think of Mexican restaurants as a big plate of rice and beans and, you know, burritos. And that's not what we are. I mean, yes, we do have rice and beans and that's kind of a side dish, but we have incredible tacos, like a pork belly, a fried pork belly uh, taco, which is over the top delicious. I mean, we have, you know, and we make everything. We make all of our own tortillas. We make our own chorizo. We make our own salsas. We make every single thing. We even make our own chipotle. So that's the smoked um, uh, jalapeno. It's really, it's really a very special place. And that's really what I wanted in opening a Mexican restaurant. It, it really is. I was funny because what I actually had was like a slow cooked lamb. It was amazing. It was oh, yeah. so good. And I couldn't believe it. And it was just, you know, just falling apart and delicious. And I couldn't even eat it all. I was still, I was still eating it in a round two later on. <laughs> I know. I know that it's really true about our food. You had the birria, which is really great, but you know, it is true. Uh, we, our restaurant is really a modern take on Mexican food. You know, I, it's funny because people always say, why Julian, why did you ever open a Mexican restaurant? I have written 16 cookbooks about the Mediterranean. I wrote one book, one about the Mediterranean. I mean, sorry, about Mexico, uh, sorry, about tequila. Um, and I haven't had any tequila yet either. And I opened a Mexican restaurant, which is crazy. So, I mean, it's really because of that one tequila book that I did, that I opened the restaurant. And I love Mexican food. I'm not the one there with the chef's jacket on, and the, but I taste everything. I make sure everything that goes on that menu is something that I really love. And um, I work a lot, I work very closely with the chefs and um, yeah, I'm very involved in the restaurant. Right. Well, you know, not only was the food delicious, obviously the service was great. And just kind of the, you know how you were talking about the vibe, you know, that feeling that you get when you just relax. I was saying my team didn't want to go. We're like, we were wrapping yeah. up and then we're like, how about a round of dessert, even though we're full and yeah, yeah, yeah. we had another round and there was like these special little dessert drinks with little fun in there and um, yeah. some delicious. Oh yeah, the Oaxacan, that's the Oaxacan chocolate milkshake. <laughs> and that has been on our menu since we opened. So it's Oaxacan chocolate ice cream. So Oaxaca is a town in the center of Mexico that um, they make a really beautiful chocolate there that has spices in it um, and cinnamon and they're not just hot spices. And um, so we combine that Oaxacan chocolate ice cream with Añejo tequila. 
So it gives you, you know, just another little boost. But really what we're known for also is our margaritas. That's the reason I opened that restaurant was because <laughs> of the margarita. Can I tell you the story, Erin? Tell me the story of the margarita. How did it okay. start? You might not know it. Okay. So um, this was a while ago. I can't even remember the year I came up with, wrote my tequila book, but I wrote a book about tequila, right? The one that really inspired the restaurant. So I wrote this book and I was on Larry Mandel's um, boat off the coast of Mexico. And Larry has this beautiful, beautiful, it's not really a boat. I think it's called a yacht. And anyway, <laughs> um, I handed him my book. And, um, and I was so proud. It was just a primer with 40 cocktails and 40 recipes for food. And I handed it to Larry and I said, here, you know, have this book. And he goes, oh, he goes, I love tequila. I make the best margarita. I was like, uh, uh, no, 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 no. I make the best margarita. So he said, let's do a little competition. So he shook up his and I shook up mine. And honestly, I tasted his margarita and I almost choked. Now, a lot of you might know Larry Mandel. He started, um, Il Fernayo, and he owns Poggio. He's a very, very well-known restaurant. He's opened about a hundred restaurants. And he definitely, his te margarita, when I tasted it, I was like, oh my, all I could taste was tequila. And so it probably had a couple drops of um, lime juice and uh -huh. also a couple <laughs> drops of um, agave nectar, but mine was really well-balanced. And it was the same three ingredients though. And so anyway, I gave him mine. He said, it, it, this is kind of how he speaks. He goes, God damn it, Joanne, that's the best margarita I've ever <laughs> He goes, if I ever found a location to open a Mexican restaurant, would you open it with me? Well, what do you think I said after two margaritas? Uh, of course, <laughs> where I'm in, right? In. Honestly, so that's how it all started. And I'm not this kidding. Award, that. This is how award-winning uh, restaurants are opened is over margaritas. Exactly. I get it, right? Exactly. Perfect. But you know, we're opening a second. So we're opening another one, which is very, very exciting. We're opening, it's going to be three times the size. Wow, the where's that going to be located? Silicon Valley in uh, Willow Glen, a really nice part of uh, San Jose. Really beautiful little community. I love it there. Anyway, it's going to be two stories with a rooftop bar. Wow, that's going to be wonderful. And is it also going to be like a Copita 2.0 or is it going to be it'll a different be, It'll style? be Copita for sure. It's another Copita that's, and it won't open until next summer only because it's a completely new build out. So yes, call me crazy at this point in my life, I am opening a second restaurant. So slowing down is not really your style, it sounds not like. Not my style at all. I have too much energy. Too oh much my energy. gosh, wonderful. No, well, this no, no. Is the, only big, person, right? Aaron, the only person I know that has more energy than me is maybe you. <laughs> I'm serious. Well, I was going to ask you, so Capita, I feel like the Sausalito version, which by the way, I recommend highly for anyone locally to hit there. And if you come on vacation to San Francisco, take a trip over and check it out because I think it's been even named in San Francisco as top restaurant in the area. Yeah. You know, just if you like Mexican food, this is where you want to go. Um, but um, I was going to say is that um, absolutely delicious food and anybody who's coming in, make sure you check it out. So good. But when you think of Copita and Sausalito, it's kind of a, you know, a niche kind of comfort, cozy place. And it sounds like the new place is going to have a different feel or a different vibe or describe how you're going to maybe bring some of what you have in Copita Sausalito to the Silicon Valley version. So that's a really good question. It's interesting because I love Copita Sausalito and I love the intimacy. I always wanted it. It's small. It's 1800 square feet and that includes the kitchen. Um, I always wanted to feel like you get there and you go, I'm home. I just, you know, it's got these beautiful Oaxacan fabric on the banquettes. It's the orange walls, the same as the color behind you. Um, it also, it's just, it's got the beautiful painting of the Himador. That's the man who's um, working out in the agave fields. I just love it so much. But we will, I think this one, it's going to be, there's an upstairs and downstairs. The downstairs will be much more, I mean, uh, it, it'll be, Oh, let's see, how do I want to say? I don't want to say formal because it's not going to be more formal, but it'll be bigger plates and a little bit, you know, uh, quieter. Upstairs will definitely be more of a bar. And so that's going to be the lively part. <laughs> yeah. And then looking out over the beautiful Willow Glen. I mean, it's on the perfect corner. It's going to be a beautiful um, location. 
the thing that we're also doing is we're working on the design right now. And I love that part. I have an art background. So for me, I've, I've loved working on the, the um, you know, working with the architect and giving my input as much as I can. Um, but anyway, yeah, I'm excited about it. It's really That's cool. going to be awesome. So is, will the upstairs be more of uh, drinks and hors d'oeuvres or will they do dinner upstairs also just a more lively version? No, you will be able to eat upstairs. Like there will be tacos and also you will also get small, lots of small plates. So oh, that yeah. sounds fun. What a good, that's people have bigger plates. I don't mean that it's going to be formal, but it'll just be a little bit larger menu with bigger, some big, big, big a few more big plates. Well, my dream is to get on the grand opening list for that. I got to get there. That sounds so fun. I love you know, it. It's great. So I, I'm just curious. You mentioned that you have an art background, right? So how how does an, a person who with an arts background end up being a celebrity chef uh, so successful over the years? How did that happen? Well, you know, my mom, I'm a fourth generation professional cook. So my mother was my grandfather, great grandmother. And wow. it was kind of a natural thing, even though I got a bachelor of fine arts degree in college. Um, I also, you know, I always loved cooking and my friends all knew me as a cook, but it wasn't like when I went to school, it wasn't cool. You didn't go to cooking school. I mean, my parents, you went to college and, and of course I'm happy that I did, but I taught for about four or five years in Boston. I taught fine arts in high school and oh, then went to cooking school. Yeah. So I went, studied cooking for a year in France. So, and back East. So um, with a very well-known woman, Madeline Cannon. So it was really, really great. I mean, um, so it was really a natural kind of thing for me to be involved with cooking. And I really thank my mother for that. Um, she was a fabulous cook and just my mentor and best friend. And um, she, yeah, she passed away four years ago. So uh, I thank her so much for that, for my love of food. And also everyone in my family has studied cooking, either studied or did something professionally. Um, yeah, so we're it's, really, all, it's, in, it's in the blood, as they say, right? So is, now tell me your your kind of, you know, obviously you have copita, but you're famous for these Mediterranean flavors and recipes and cuisine. Is that the influence from your mom or your studies or a combination of both? How did you kind of, how did that become your niche? Right. Oh, that's another good question, Erin. <laughs> um, well, you know, after you were Joanne. <laughs> You know, by, what happened really for me was when I was studying cooking, I was studying in France and uh, back east with Madeleine Kamen. It was all about cream and butter. And I didn't, and though I studied cuisine from all over the world, a lot was about French cuisine and just kind of the principles of French cuisine. And I didn't really like rich food. I've never liked cream and butter. It just was not my thing. Um, I mean, yes, if I have a piece of toast with some delicious butter, yes, I will eat that. <laughs> but it's not something that I seek out. And so when I came back after I was living in California before and I was coming back to California, my dream was to work at Chez Panisse. And I was lucky enough to get a job at Chez Panisse wow. and I worked there for five years. So yeah, that really um, was such an extraordinary experience. And even to this day, I'm a very, very close friend of Alice Waters and I've just filmed with her not that long ago um, with the launch of her new book and um, yeah I've just always stayed in touch with the restaurant I sometimes I haven't done it in a, uh, be, since before COVID but I go back and I'll work there sometimes which is how kind fun of is that <laughs> oh, no, no no they give me jobs like I'm taking a big case. I'm trying to hold my hands like of apples and say, now peel these apples. Oh. I'm serious, and I'm peeling apples until my hand is like crippled and I can't even open it up again. But anyway, I They're would like anything to, to be work. there. Was, I loved that working there. It was just an, oh my a really wonderful experience. So how do you transition? Because you did five years there. Obviously, you just, you know, <clears throat> really you know, chiseled, I guess, your love of everything with these fine tastes. So how does it transition into who you are today, right? Because books and tours and recipes and show, TV shows. Right? I mean, okay, so when I studied with Madeline in France and um, back east, um, one of the things that kept coming up was we had to, we had to do many things during that one year, but one of them was we had to teach class to everyone. And she said, you really, she was really tough, by the way, she was a real taskmaster, an extraordinary person, but she said, you really have a gift for teaching. And I remember I had also te taught already before, right. and I, I really liked teaching and I, 
I teach very visually. I mean, I talk and I really can explain techniques. And I think that's what she saw in me. But anyway, so I, when I was working at Shape Panisse, um, I started, I thought, I want to try to teach a class. And so I first taught at Taunton Lee's Cooking School in San Francisco. That was the first place. And then speaking to my teacher, Madeline Cameron, she said, you know, I hear so many great things about you. You need to travel around the country. Why don't you work with my agent? And she'll set you up with classes around the country. So that's what I did wow. for a couple of years. And I did that. I mean, there, I would go to 70 cities in a year. Oh my Whoa, God. Whoa, that's a just, lot. Was, that's grueling. Non-stop. I would get home Sunday night and I'd get on a plane Monday morning and go again. I mean, I taught so much, but it was really, really a wonderful experience. And then um, let's see. So my first book came out in 1994. And, uh, you know, when you, you're, my book came out, first of all, I worked at Chez Panisse and, you know, my first book came out and um, the book did really, really well. It was a book called From Tapas to Meze. And a lot of people called it the chef's cookbook. And when you have a, a book that comes out and you, um, you know, you go on the, if, if you're, you know, you have a name, you go on um, television shows. So I was on like, you know, the Today Show, Good Morning America. And we had all these clips that we put together on a video. And we, um, it, it, it somehow it got circulated around KQED, our public television station here in San Francisco, and two producers, and I think it was actually three contacted me. Yeah, it was three and said, we saw your video. We're looking for someone like you. Would you be interested in doing television? Wow. And I just about, I, I mean, I was shocked. I was really wow. shocked. And I, I talked to all three and I chose one of them. But I also have to tell you another thing that happened. During, um, there was a, an award that came out and it was when I was traveling and teaching, there was a Julia Child Award for the top cooking teacher internationally. It was a, um, the uh, first time they ever gave the award. And um, I received that award. So I started already getting like, I guess, you know, and uh, the funny thing is you can probably tell I have a lot of enthusiasm and <laughs> I love it. Um, I've received two awards for passion. I wow. mean, it's weird. I mean, who gets passion awards? But, <laughs> so anyway, that is how oh, I got gets passion awards. That too. <laughs> yeah. You should get a passion award. Exactly. I want one of those, an honorary passion award. You um, have passion, I will oh tell you. Goodness. That's incredible. What a story. I love hearing how it evolves, right? And just right. putting it out there and you're passionate, right? right. And doing what you right. love and people start to see it and they just gravitate towards it, right? right. So what an amazing story. But, you know, Erin, it's also been a lot of hard work. You know, I mean, to just tell you, like my work has been scheduled so far out always that there are things like I miss my sister's wedding. I mean, my own sister's wedding. It wasn't a huge wedding, but I miss my sister's wedding. So that gives you a little idea of what it's like um, when you have a busy schedule like that and you've scheduled something that's, um, I mean, I can't even believe that I'm saying that at this point, but I, you know, um, I, she, and she was great. She's like, we'll celebrate another time. Please don't even think about it. But I, I, I really miss some things in my life, you know, miss events or people's weddings or whatever, you know, right. um, just being so busy. Um, busy, but also scheduling my work so far out, like the tours that I do or the classes that I was even teaching around the United States. If you right. put together a tour, you can't just say, hey, I'm not coming when they've got everybody all signed up, you know? Exactly. No, that's really difficult. I feel like, you know, any type of entrepreneur, but particularly in your position, just, you know, having such a dynamic schedule and so many different things booked far out in advance. Um, you know, finding that balance can be difficult. Right. Do you, do you right. feel like you're achieving that at this point? Or are you still just go, go, going? And, no, and no, no. I think it's much better, but it's so easy to say after two years at home, right? Right. <laughs> exactly. So, well, now we're like dying to go out, you know, it's like, take me on tour. I'll go anywhere. I'll go anywhere. Um, but yeah, I think, no, I think I've, I've chosen what I, the things that I really love the most in my work, because at one point, I mean, in 2012, it was a ridiculous year. I opened Copita. So next year it's 10 years. I opened, I think that's correct. I opened Copita. I wrote a book. I launched a food brand. 
I mean, a wine brand at Joanne Weir Wines, and I and I don't have it anymore. See, I cut some things out, and then I also wait. And I had a I, we, I filmed in twenty six new shows. It could have been fifty two. I mean, it was the craziest year. And Karen, who's my um, marketing manager, she was like, uh, "Let's not do two thousand twelve again." Sometimes right. I feel like next year could be that year again. Um, the restaurant, but, everything happening, yeah. you know, you push, you like to push yourself. <laughs> I do. I mean, listen, it's 10 years later, I've got the energy, but I do have a lot of energy. So. Yeah, you do. And obviously you want to share it, but it's like finding it. So you're enjoying it as right. well. You know, right. and I also have a husband. I mean, I love San Francisco. <laughs> I want to be here. Oh, that's know? right. My husband. Yeah, what husband? <laughs> but, yeah. Does he go around with you on these tours or he, how do you guys uh, get he comes a lot, but I'll tell you the funny thing is, um, he comes, but he will be there and he's like, hey, we're having a great old time. And I'm like, okay, well, we're going to take a week off after. And he goes, no, 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 that was my vacation. So <laughs> I'm like, no, I was working. I need a vacation. So it's very hard to kind of have these vacations because it, when I'm working in Europe, um, you know, it's not, I, listen, I love my tours. It's my favorite thing I do. I love them. But um, it, it, it definitely is work too. And yeah, of course, uh, you know, you're to be on and you're teaching and keeping everybody energized. Talk exactly. a little bit more about the tours. I was looking on, I'm following you on Facebook, right? And oh, getting good. all these, yeah. seeing so many wonderful things that I just want to be a yeah. part of. And I saw this um, uh, Southern Italy, Sicilian tour that I was looking at. I was like, oh gosh, that sounds wonderful. So tell me about these culinary tours. How do you select the places, what's a right. day in the life on a tour with Joanne uh, Weir? <laughs> I love them. I'm serious, Erin. I love doing them. So um, I have locations. I started this 21 years ago. It could be actually 22. It was about the same time I started television. See, I like to do a lot of things at once, I guess. But um, <laughs> anyway, um, There's a trend I, started, here. <laughs> I started them and it was, I started with one tour and it was in, um, the Veneto in Italy. So it included going to Venice. And so that was my first tour. And I, we were book solid. We had so many people that we ended up having to offer three of them. Wow. So, um, and then, and I was working with another company. I was working for a company then. They were the ones that approached me and said, we'd love you to come and teach if you'd like to bring groups. Uh, it was a small company and um, I really got to be very close with the woman who owned it. So anyway, um, and then I started doing them on my own, but I started there and then I also added Tuscany to it. But then that was just Italy. Then I had, a, then I decided that I could do these on my own. And so I started my own company called Joanne Weir's Culinary Journeys. And I, so I, it's, this is so, yeah. And uh, this sec the next uh, country I started going to, at first, yeah, it was just those two. It was the Veneto and Tuscany. Then the next one was Provence. And then after that, I was like, well, you know what? I have friends in Spain. I could do one in Spain. I have these really close friends in the Rioja in the Northern part. They own the top restaurant there. We stay in a beautiful hotel. They were like, we'd love to share the Rioja with people. That's where you fly into Bilbao, which is where the Guggenheim is beautiful town, you eat tapas, we pick you up and we take care of you for a week. So I did that one. And then I was like, wait a minute, I love Spain. What about Seville? So I did what started doing them in Southern Spain. And then the next one that came up, oh, believe it or not, was Marrakesh, Morocco, which everybody wants to go on that trip. Yeah, I want to go. <laughs> yeah, I would love you to come. It is a favorite of mine also. I've been doing them there for 12 years, wow. which is incredible. But everybody wants to go to Marrakesh. Everybody. I mean, if I put it on, um, I, I'm doing one uh, in April of next year, and it's already full. I mean, it's been wow. full for a long time. Wow. Um, anyway, so uh, Marrakesh. And then after that, it was Greece, two islands in Greece. Oh, uh I've, but I've got several locations like in Spain and several in Italy. I now am in Sicily. Sicily is over the top. The location is gorgeous. Um, and All then the pictures, it was a dream. Just you'll a love dream. it. Yeah. I have new locations. I now have Portugal that's coming up. Wow. I, and this is a castle that we're staying in. And that's going to be at the, uh, let's see, spring of 2023. And uh, yes, yeah, so I have seven tours next wow. year so, so i have four tell, me a bit of, tell me a little bit about it so do you right. 
cook the whole time? Are you touring? Like what, how does it work? That's a great question too. Um, so what we do is during the week, so it's six nights, seven days, and every single solitary thing is paid for while you're with us, wow. um, except for your flight to get there. And um, so we, um, so it's during the week, it's usually about four or five cooking classes where we sit down and we eat after. And I have to tell you that everybody loves the cooking classes. Um, and usually it's five, but that means we've got a lot of other meals. So we always have breakfast, of course, at the villa. And then we usually will go on a few excursions, you know, three or four, but sometimes, okay, it'd be something like, we're going to go in Spain. We went out to this, we go out to this river. It's called the River Oja, Rioja. And um, what we do is we make paella outside in this big, I'm showing big pan outside and uh, along the river, which is what Spanish people do. I try to do things that people cannot find in travel books. These are things that since I've been there so many times and I have so many friends there, these are very special um, things that we do. Okay, in Morocco, for example, the last night, there is this beautiful um, trellised uh, walkway. So it's all green above. We hang 1,000 candles. And we have this long uh, table and we all sit at the table with, it's all candlelit. It's amazing. Everybody gets dressed up. We all wear white, which is uh -huh. really cool. And we bring, I bring in Moroccan musicians. It is the most magical evening. Right. It's magical. So I it take sounds like you use the culture and people yes. get to get a real sure. feel for things they wouldn't normally see. Yes. That's unbelievable. I mean, like Tuscany is the same way. The last night, what I do, I surprise them. And people come, uh, what we do the last night is we have this really beautiful dinner. Someone, and sometimes it's a cooking demo too. Like there's a, a butcher that lives right close by and he comes in and teaches people how to make porchetta, which is a wonderful dish. And then we have that for dinner. It's this rolled pork dish. And then I bring in opera singers. And this is a 16th century villa that I use where everybody stays. Uh, it's beautiful. It is so beautiful. It's renovated and um, it's just exquisitely done. And, um, and the, the musicians are, they, the opera singers are singing in the room that's called the music room. So the acoustics are incredible. I bring in a pizzaiolo. So that's a pizza maker to oh. teach them how to make pizza dough and how to, <laughs> yeah. And he makes pizzas for us in that they have a wood fired pizza oven in this wow. villa. It's really special. They're just yeah, such an experience, that, right? And I could go on and on because uh, <laughs> just amazing things. That yeah, and your passion is coming through. So I, I was trying to convince yeah. my husband to go. You know, I was just wondering, like, is this right. a couple thing or like yeah, that's what kind of people come? Because yeah. I, I, I can't really seem to solicit him for some cooking classes. So how how to how accessible is this to me? By the way, I can't tell you how many husbands say they're not going to cook. And by the end, they, they always want to cook. And always, by the way, I love wine too. And I know a lot about it and I've studied it for a long time. So these are mostly in wine regions. I mean, pretty much all wine regions, except for Morocco. Um, and, but we do drink wine there. Um, but anyway, it's <laughs> <Not> always, <laughs> yeah, so I'm not going to miss that. So um, it's girlfriends come together, mothers and daughters, um, brothers and sisters. It's really fantastic. I wow. love them. So in the group, there's usually around 15 people. You can find all of this on my website, joannweir.com and Wonderful. just go to the culinary tours. Great. Yeah. So speaking of the website, right? So the culinary tours, I think a lot of people will be very interested in doing that, but tell me a little bit more about other things on the website that are available. I was looking around and seeing some delicious recipes. You know, how do people kind of follow and, you know, be able to see all these recipes that you're putting out because uh, delicious cuisine. So how do, how do we access that? Sure. You know, I, we send out a, an email twice a month. I don't send more than that. And I send a lot of recipes and then I also send information about the new tours or tours that are going on. So um, that's a great way. So you can just go on my website. It's J-O-A-N-N-E-W-E-I-R.com. And you can just go to, um, you'll see as soon as you go on, there's a little, um, what do I want to say? There's a little blank space there where you can fill in your email address and oh, you'll be on the mailing list. So it's very easy. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of recipes on my website. 
um, and all the recipes from my TV show. And by the way, my most recent TV show that 52 shows is uh, called Plates and Places. And that one is very fun because it was really me traveling. So it's me on my tour, a lot of them, a lot of my tours. So it's me being in, let's see, Italy, Greece, Spain, Morocco, um, even traveling along the Danube River and along the Rhine River. It was, so that is, I love that series. All of them are filmed uh, in Europe. So would yeah. people watch your show on the website or where would we see this on TV? Like how can we access your show? It's on P two ne uh, networks. It's all on PBS, which everyone knows PBS, but it's also on Create. Create. So that's another 24 hour DIY um, network. And it's really a great network for cooking, whatever. There's all kinds of shows on there, but it's 24 hours. So Create. Last weekend, I think it was last weekend, they did a huge marathon. It was Joanne Weir from Friday night through to Saturday night. So um, yeah, uh, it was really interesting, but we have a lot of people after that that saw it and uh, wanted to go on trips. So that's great. Yeah. So Joanne, you know, I think of myself, I make a few dishes, right? You know, but you know, a little bit of a rookie chef, like, so can I really follow your recipes and come out with a good success at the end? Like, tell me a little bit about, you know, right. is it easy to follow or, or am I going to be making delicious cuisine and amazing my friends and family? <laughs> well, yes, you are. But I'll tell you one thing that the New York Times wrote about me a long, long, long time ago. It's like Joanne Weir's recipes work. And I really feel that I wrote, you know, one of my TV sh series, it was 52 shows. It was a lot of shows usually. No, actually it was more than that. I can't even remember how many, but it was <laughs> called Cooking Confidence because I've always felt that I wanted to teach people to cook. See, I'm still the teacher and I really want people to cook. And um, so I, I feel like if you can do one recipe and you get some confidence from that recipe, you'll try another one. So that's why I think cooking shows are great. Um, but I really do feel like I write very visually, I think, and I write so that people can really understand my recipes. But I feel like, you know, people have always, people have written, I'm one of the, um, just to give you an example, one of the series I did that was also 52 shows was called Cooking Class. And it was, it was even more than that. I, I think I did um, more, it was more. Maybe I can't remember. You're unbelievable. You've done so many, you can't keep track of the count. No, I can't. But anyway, that was me with a student with me on my show. And a lot of people know me for that series. And a lot of people have written and said, I never cooked before I watched that show. Thank you for teaching me to cook. And even now, I don't really have students with me all the time. And people still write to me and say, can you please bring the students back on the show? Because they really like the students. But maybe What an sick. inspiration. I mean, I just feel like a lot of people are intimidated by cooking. Yeah. So just giving them that confidence really, really right. helps. Right. You know, speaking of confidence, right? We have a big holiday coming up, right? You know, so everybody's going to be trying their hand at some sort of cooking, right? Whether it's right. breakfast or appetizers or what have you. Do you have any holiday favorites that you can share? Yeah, you know, first of all, there's a lot on my website, but I thought I was thinking about this before. One of the things I'm going to make for Christmas morning, I love this dish. It's called, believe it or not, what a weird name. It's called Eggs in Purgatory. And it's so good and it's so easy, Erin. You have to make this. So you make this tomato sauce. Okay. In a baking dish, you crack eggs in it. And you can do it. What I do is tomato. I actually start with a little bit of bacon because who doesn't love bacon and eggs, right? <laughs> But you've got this kind of slightly spicy tomato sauce and you don't have to use the spice. It doesn't have to be hot. I'm salivating talking about it. Um, <laughs> but I put it in a baking dish and then I crack two eggs in it or how many, however, if it's four people, I mean, two of you, it should be four eggs and then crack them in and pop it in the oven and I bake it and I take it out of the oven. It takes like 12 minutes or something. I can't even remember. And you sprinkle it with um, grated Parmesan and then also, um, I think I had a little pinch of crushed red pepper on the top. I can't remember. It's so delicious. And it's easy. It sounds and pretty simple. I don't know. We'll have to see. I'm going to have to look at that recipe. Is that on your website? Yes, it is. Eggs in Purgatory. Um, and also what you don't, um, you can make the tomato sauce beforehand. Right. I mean, it's something that's really easy. Put it in the baking dish. Bring it out so that the baking dish and the tomato sauce are room temperature. So you're not putting the ice cold. 
um, pan in the oven and then crack the eggs into it. I'm serious, it's delicious. Serve it with some delicious bread. I'm, that's it. I mean, good. Don't need anything. The egg, do the eggs just sit in there or do you scramble them up or what are the eggs? No, you just put them. So basically you're cooking the eggs in that tomato sauce. So it's kind of, I don't want to say they're fried. What are they? I'm there like, I don't know. I don't know what you would call that. But the yolks are, are whole. Yeah, the yolks are whole and you, um, and so when you crack into it, you know, the, it gets runny and it runs into oh, the tomato delicious. sauce and you slather it on your bread. It's so good. Oh my gosh. It's really what's good. The what's the best bread to pair with that? A bread? Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, I have to tell you, my husband's favorite bread is olive bread. So I'm sure that's what I'm going to get. <laughs> olive bread. I don't even know if I've had olive bread. So oh, I got Good, like a bread with olives in it. And I can't remember, I think the one, what is the one that's made? I can't remember the one that's here in the city, but um, for people that live in San Francisco, but there's so many great breads out there. Acme makes a delicious olive bread. So well, I am that. completely inspired. Okay, I'm doing breakfast more, uh, Christmas morning for sure. Now, maybe you can share one more. One other, um, oh, yeah, I want to like one other recipe. Yeah. Okay, so this is a dessert. It is my go-to dessert right now because it's so simple. You make it in one bowl. It is the simplest cake imaginable, and it is my favorite. I, I Right now, I'm obsessed. I think I've made it for every single person that's come to my house. I've made it for so many things. I brought it places. So it's a Spanish cake, and it's called Torta de Santiago, and it's a Spanish cake that you seriously, it's made with almond flour. It's gluten-free and dairy-free. Wow. And it is out of this world, moist and delicious. Oh so no God. butter, no flour. I mean, it's really incredible just with almond flour, almond flour eggs. It wow. is excellent. Oh, I've got to see that. Is that on your, on your site as well? Yes. I've got to look that up. You know, it's funny that you were just talking about it being, you know, almond flour and gluten-free. That was right. one of the things we all noticed immediately at your restaurant, Copita. The yes. entire menu is gluten-free, very healthy. So as much as we are just feeling like we're being treated to the most delicious food, it has a healthy vibe yeah. too. So that's, yeah, yeah. I think, part of your influence. Right. Well, it was, I mean, gluten-free, I have been gluten-free for a long time. Um, I, I mean, I can eat a little bit. I'm not celiac or anything, but it, it doesn't really, um, I don't sleep well, which is really weird. And that's why I don't eat it. But uh, I was just in New York and I just cheated a lot. Eating <laughs> but um, now that I'm home, I'm being really good. I'm back to my chicken soup diet, homemade chicken <laughs> soup. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, it, we are gluten-free. We're a hundred percent gluten-free. We have no flour in the kitchen and people that are celiac or have issues, they really love it. And yeah. we did that because there isn't, there's more corn than there is flour. And we just made that decision that we would go in that direction. It's been really, people really like that. Really, I think it's true. And I all honestly feel that it's kind of synonymous, like making recipes, especially at the holiday time or going out to dinner. It's kind of associated with rich food, putting on pounds, right. you know, just kind of this explosion of food. And I think you, you found that sweet spot. So it's pretty, I tell you, now that you're saying that there's one other recipe that I made last Christmas that I really love. Let's it's hear it. <laughs> so easy. And it's also on my website. It was, um, I can't remember. I think it was, um, on the Today Show, they put it on their website, but it is for a roasted carrot hummus with, and instead of using um, pita bread, what I did was just take winter vegetables like carrots and parsnips and uh, uh, let's see, I mean, I used all kinds of things like and watermelon radishes, radishes. Um, and then what I do is slice them paper thin either by hand, but I like to use a mandolin for that. And then I put them in ice cold water so they kind of curl a little bit. And you use those as a scoop with this roasted carrot hummus that's delicious. Oh my gosh, I'm not to check that out. You know, it's so funny because I'm sitting here thinking, gosh, I might need to go get something to eat. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> You're talking I know. To you, I'm starting to get my stomach is growling thinking this over. So that's so funny. funny. Yeah, I, I just ate breakfast and now I'm hungry too. I'm talking about that's that funny. I love. This sounds good. I want to go whip this up right now. I know. We're salivating. Working. So, well, Joanne, you are just an absolute gem, right? I mean, talk Thank about you passion. Me. You are unbelievable. I have been so excited from the minute that I met you. I was like, I love this. I want to bring Joanne, you know, out to all my audience to get to That's see great. not just 
the celebrity chef and all this stuff that people hear about, but you're just a wonderful human, tons of passion. And thank I just you. like uh, your energy and being around you. So thank you so much for oh. joining the show today. Um, would you remind how everybody how to get in touch with you, Joanne, if they want to join your newsletter yeah. and access all these recipes and see some of your shows? Sure, absolutely. First of all, I want to thank you, Erin, because I knew we would never run out of things to say. <laughs> I think you're excellent at this. I think you need your own TV show. I think you'd be great at it. You could be the Susie Orman of This is 65. Um, I think you could- I like this. This vision is good. I <laughs> really like it, but I mean it. Um, but also you can find me at www.joannweir.com. So it's J-O-A-N-N-E-W-E-I-R. And as I always tell people, just think of the weird, the word weird and take the D <laughs> off. It's a really easy way to remember my last name. So Joanne Weir. I love anyway, it. I love talking to you. Me Thanks. too. And thank you so much. And happy holidays to you and your family. I wish I was just dropping by to maybe eat a few of the things you're preparing, but okay, I have to do it on my own. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for joining and um, hope to have you on the show again in the future. I would love it. A big love to you. Bye. Bye, Erin. Bye-bye.